Hello, my good friends. How are you doing today? This is BTD5, episode 5 of Science. And today we're going to talk about the darkest objects in the entire universe. Yes, indeed, that is black holes. So there are th two to three main parts of a black hole. I think two of them are extremely important. The other ones, eh, it's kind of important. There's a singularity, the event horizon, and then there's kind of like an in-between area in between those two. So the singularity is the point where all of the mass is in the black hole, because all a black hole really is is just a bunch of mass in a really small area. But also, there's another part to the black hole, which is basically the very edge of the black hole, uh, the point at which no light could possibly ever escape, because it's important to understand that light is the fastest thing in the entire universe, and if la light can't escape, nothing can escape, and that's why it looks black. So the event horizon is the very, very edge where gravity is so intense that even light can never escape that area. And the cool thing about black holes is that the event horizon can actually get bigger, but I'll talk about that in a little while. So, black holes do not suck. I gotta get that out of the way right now. Black holes do not suck. They are, uh, they absorb stuff because it gets basically so close that nothing can escape, that things can't escape it, but at the same time, just as an example, if the sun magically turned into a black hole of the exact same mass, the only difference that would, the only difference in the, uh, that we would see is that light is uh, gone. It's just gone. We don't have any more light. But the, it would revolve in the exact same way, so it's not really changing that. It doesn't suck it forward or anything like that. You guys have to understand that gravity is still the same if it's in a singularity or if it's in the same um, general size of the sun, you know, a pretty big area. And now, there's two sets of types of black black holes that I could talk about, at least f from my knowledge. There's spinning versus non-spinning black holes, which I'm going to talk about only non-spinning black holes, because it seems to make more sense um, when you only talk about those guys, because they're simpler and they're easier to understand. And once you start talking about angular mo momentum and electrical charge and or charge of the black hole and all these random things, it gets really freaking complicated. And I don't want to make things complicated. I want to make things easy for you guys. I want you guys to understand the basics and understand um, black holes kind of starting at the trunk of the tree. Then there's also two other types of black holes. There's a stellar black hole and a super massive black hole. Oh my god. I want to talk about stellar massive stellar uh, black holes first before I get into this giant super massive mega massive black holes. Because stellar black holes are probably how super massive black holes started as well. Stellar bl stellar black holes are um are created by a star exploding. So if you have a star that is about 25 times bigger than, or 25 times the mass of our sun, or more, when it gets towards the end of its life cycle, after it uses up almost all of the energy that it has, it goes into supernova. And I'll explain that, I'll explain why just really, really quick. Um, basically, the way this a star is, is the why it's a giant ball, and why it is the size that it is, is that you have a bunch of fusion going on inside of the star, and the fusion pushes out. The fusion pushes the star out, and then you have gravity pushing in. So you basically get an equilibrium between those two guys. Um, you get an equilibrium between those two guys, and if it gets messed up, the star is going to start getting messed up and something bad is going to happen. And when it starts running out of energy and it doesn't have that push out, gravity starts taking over. Oh god, gravity is going to start destroying that star. So it just keeps crushing it and crushing it and crushing it. And you got a couple things that try and keep it from getting crushed, like, uh, for example, a neutron star. Neutrons don't like being close together, and that'll keep it from going too far. But if it does break beyond that, all that's going to happen is you're just going to get an implosion, and a giant mega implosion is going to shoot a bunch of energy out, but what's left over is a bunch of mass. And what's that, what's left over of that mass is a black hole. And like I said, all a black hole is is a bunch of mass. That's all it is. Um, so, now I also got to talk about the supermassive black holes. Oh yeah. So a supermassive black hole probably formed the same way that a stellar massive black hole, or a stellar black hole did. Um, it probably just came from a supernova, but after that it started absorbing more matter more mass. Uh, the more mass the more mass that a black hole gets, the bigger it technically gets. The infinitely small singularity doesn't get any bigger, but the event horizon gets bigger. So black holes can absorb a bunch of uh, things, whether it's light, anything that's energy, really. Anything that's energy, which is basically everything. Everything is energy. Mass is energy. So uh, if you get a star that goes in there, you get something that goes in there, 
you're going to get a bigger black hole and then eventually all that has to happen is that things have to start going start revolving around that black hole and that's basically how a galaxy forms black holes supermassive black holes kind of keep galaxies together that's why we have uh all this stuff, and if, especially if you th have things that aren't spinning fast enough, eventually they'll just fall into the black hole. It's kind of like if you have a satellite around Earth and it doesn't go fast enough, it's going to slowly start falling towards Earth and eventually hit Earth. Next thing we have to talk about. Let's talk about um, the event horizon. I think the event horizon is a super cool topic. In fact, it's probably the coolest part of a black hole to talk about. Uh, the event horizon, like I said, is the place where no light can no longer escape. Nothing can possibly escape if it touches the event horizon. So what would happen if you went into a black hole? First of all, x-rays, gamma rays, all this radiation is going to kill you right off the get-go. Not including that you're going to get ripped into billions upon trillions of pieces because of the tidal forces that the black hole will cause you to have. So yes, you will indeed die if you try and go inside of a black hole. But hey, what, what if? What if you could fall into a black hole and not die? Let's say we're taking our spaceship in there. We're taking our spaceship into the black hole. And we're basically just going to look outside. We're going to look towards uh, the universe instead of in so in into the singularity, you know? What would you see? Basically, because of relativity, you would see the exact same thing. You, you would not experience time any differently. Um, of course, that's... We don't know that for sure, but just based on physics, that's what we think is going to happen. You're not going to really see anything too differently. But once you get inside of the event horizon, uh, the universe outside would be experiencing time, but you would be in a place where there is no, where there is no time going on because of infinite time dilation. So basically, you would see the universe pass by in an instant. The universe would just be over because you're inside that black hole. Very interesting indeed, but also you have to think about a couple other things uh, that black holes don't really last forever and stuff like that. So what would happen once you get to that point? I don't really know. Not a lot of people even can make good theories about it, but I'll keep that just, uh, I won't even really talk about it. But what happens if you looked at the person falling into the black hole? If you were at a safe distance and you saw somebody falling into the black hole, what would happen? You would actually just see them... Uh, falling into the black hole slower and slower and slower and slower. You'd never actually see them fall into the black hole. It would take forever for them to fall into the black hole. So that's why it's kind of cool. You have to understand that relativity means it's relative. You see something, the other person doesn't. And it's interesting. It's very interesting indeed. Um, so... What about the singularity? The singularity is also an interesting thing. The uh, singularity does not mean it has infinite mass. Like I said, you guys can get more mass. The more stuff that falls into the black hole, the more mass you're going to get. But it also means it does have infinite density, which just understanding that if you say something is infinite, it just doesn't make sense. Math doesn't make sense. The universe doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense in when you have something called infinite. If you ever do anything with math, infinity is not a real number. We say it's infinity, so we understand that it's a, a number that goes on forever, but it's not actually a real number. It's not a solution to any problem. So that's why singularity is just a really cool topic to think about, something that's infinite. Infinity. In fact, I'm probably going to make another video about infinity someday, so if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Tell me, make a comment in there, make a couple likes if you like somebody else's uh, comment. And anyway, oh, there's another cool fact for you guys. Einstein actually didn't think black holes could form. Uh, most physicists in the early 1900s also agreed with Einstein. They said, no, black holes can't form. I'm not going to go into the reasons why, but he basically thought it wasn't possible for a black hole to form. It shouldn't be possible according to physics, the rules of physics, basically. So another cool thing is that black holes actually evaporate over time. Um, this, they evaporate because of something called uh, Hawking radiation. Stephen Hawking, if you've heard of him, he basically theorized that radiation, um, the point, the event horizon, it's kind of hard to explain because it gets into quantum mechanics and stuff like that, but basically particles pop in and out of existence all the time, and if you have a particle that pops into existence outside of the black hole and then pops uh, out of existence inside the black hole, Basically, you're going to get more matter outside of the black hole than inside of the black hole, and it happens It happens a lot. So you get a little bit of decay of the black hole over time. So black holes actually do not last forever. Interesting. Yes, black holes don't last forever. Um, 
And then here's probably the most interesting topic of them all. What happens when black holes, black holes collide? When black holes collide, nothing too intense actually happens. It's just you get a giant black hole. That's all that happens. I just, I just wanted to really get you guys, really get you guys going with that one. If a star goes falls into a black hole, it just becomes more massive. Just like when a black hole collides with another black hole, you just get a more massive black hole. Nothing too crazy, just a bigger event horizon. And that's all I got for you guys today. If you like this video, please press like. If you got any suggestions, put them in the comments down there, and I'll keep that up and hopefully get some more videos for you guys pretty darn soon. Have a great day.